Good morning. My name is Ozana Meirales, and I would like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to be here today speaking of, of peroral endoscopic myotomy. These are my disclosures. We cannot talk about POMI without talking about achalasia uh, because it was the best utilization of a natural orifice transendoluminal technique to treat a disease. It has become the gold standard. Achalasia is a rare disease, of course, of a rare prevalence, uh, occurs similarly in men and women between 30 and 6 years old, and the mainly in the United States is idiopathic. On the history of achalasia for, for its treatment, uh, first diagnosing, uh, describing 1672 by Sir Thomas Wills, which also treated with a fish bone, but it's not until the 1913 that uh, Dr. Heller performed the very first surgical intervention, which was the, then became famous the Heller myotomy. The diagnosis is multimodality, uh, going from a barium swallow that showed the classic bird's beak uh, to uh, flexible endoscopy to assess mucosa. But of course, the gold standard for the diagnosis is a high resolution manometry, which I very well describe a Chiclayo classification. It goes from one, two, and three. The treatment modality goes from uh, pharmacotherapy, uh, endoscopic injections of, uh, such as Botox, pneumatical dilation, and then finally the surgical myotomy, which you know is the gold standard for the treatment of achalasia. Very low mortality, less than 0 .1, about 0 0.1, and a very high success rate. So if you go back to the very first surgical treatment, there's a thoracotomy uh, illustrating uh, myotomy on the lower esophageal sphincter as the Heller myotomy. Following that, the technique then evolved um, when a minimally invasive technique such as laparoscopy and robotic procedures were introduced. We're not going to be covering them here uh, on this uh, presentation. And finally, in 2008, when Haruhiro Inoue and uh, introduced the endoscopic era of uh, endoscopic, uh, per hour endoscopic myotomy. And as image, you can see a classic image where the cir circular uh, fibers are described right there being myotomized of a flexible uh, endocut knife in the submucosal tunnel. So going just a step back, POEM uh, was first described in animal models in 2007 when Parsha uh, was performing uh, in his lab. Followed that in 2009, Dr. Inoue introduced to the clinical practice. Those are the POMI steps, which we're going to cover each one of them. First, uh, a, a mucosotomy is performed about 10 centimeters from the Z line of the lower of reduced sphincter level. The gastroscope is then advanced into the submucosal tunnel, developing uh, this mucosal flap. Following that, a myotomy is, is performed starting about 5 centimeters from the LES and extending about 2 to 3 centimeters beyond uh, the LES. And finally, the procedure clips are placed to close the mucosa. First, starting with inspection, esophagus needs to be clean. Uh, we use a, a solution of uh, saline and basic tracing to irrigate the esophagus. Then, uh, using an sclerotherapy needle, a submucosal blab is raised by the means of uh, using endocarmine, epinephrine, and saline. Follow that when we have the mucosa lift from the esophageal wall. We then use an endocut knife from the herb generator to perform the myotomy. I'm sorry, the mucosotomy, as you can see. There are other techniques. You can use a hybrid knife. You can use the uh, IT knife, but that's what we prefer to do here at Mass General. You, you want to extend that mucosa at least about a centimeter and a half uh, before you get your cap inside. You're always going to stretch a little bit so there's not a problem to be end up larger than the size of the endoscope from the beginning. And you have to be very careful not to be burning uh, the muscle on that particular level, otherwise you're going to have a through and through incision. Okay. So let's go to the next uh, step where we're going to be placing the cap inside the, the mucosa, the submucosa space. And then we continue the dissection. Once in the submucosa space, the orientation is at this level we have the muscle fibers. At the bottom portion here, we're not seeing yet, we have the mucosa, and you want to be on this areolar uh, tissue. 
and cutting always close to the muscle and away from the mucosa to perform uh, to avoid any mucosal perforation. Any mucosal perforation could be a risk or be a through and through uh, perforation. You may need to put clips from, on the outside. This tunnel is then advanced uh, th th uh, for 10 centimeters until you get to a point that you're going to notice uh, a few things. One is that area is going to start narrowing, which represents the acolytic portion. Let's just flip forward a little bit here. When the tunnels are getting more narrow like this, you're getting to the acolytic portion. So uh, always remember to in inject more so you can actually leave the mucosa away. Sometimes you have to do start doing some of the myotomy if that is too tight of that portion. The other thing that we see, we're not seeing in this video, is what's being described as a palisading vessel. So the characteristics of intramural um, uh, location of the Z-line. Then the myotomy. So after you've done the tunnel, um, be sure to inspect the true lumen and see if there is a mucosal perforation, which was already done, but not described in this video. Now the cap is being introduced back into the submucosal tunnel, keeping the orientation where you can see the myotomy. Right there, very clearly, you can see the circular fibers here. And on the background, you see the longitudinal fibers. Myotomy can be performed uh, just by doing uh, my, uh, circular fibers myotomy on longitudinal fibers. On the beginning of our experience, we were uh, only doing the circular fibers, but I was noticing as we are advancing with the case that some of the longitudinal fibers were being split uh, and therefore not saving much time for us uh, trying to preserve them. But highly recommend on the beginning uh, of uh, start doing this type of uh, technique if you're not that experience, try to preserve the longitudinal fibers. And then finally, when you're done with the procedure, mucosal closure. And the mucosal closure can be accomplished either by uh, placing individual clips uh, or by using endoscopic suturing devices. The clips cost about $100. The suturing device, depending on the contract you have, uh, may cost close to a thousand dollars so depending how many clips you're going to be using um, perhaps using suturing may be better uh, but in general like we can close those uh, mucosotomies with about four to six clips uh, when the mucosotomy is not that much enlarged uh, but it can be as as long as with 12 clips or even perhaps more depending how 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 enlarged you got the mucosotomy other thing about the clips, try to use the ones of one one uh, rotation. The reason I, I chose this particular clip just to see that using the, the cheaper ones to lower profile, it may take a little bit longer until we can actually position those clips uh, properly versus if you use those new ones of a one-to-one -one ratio, it's much easier to close. We came and close that in about, about three minutes. Well, so those are the steps of the procedure. How we develop this introduced technique in, the, in, the, in Mass General. First, uh, Ratner and G, they were doing some lab work. Um, I was doing some clinical work at UC San Diego. We put those two together, and then we started doing uh, preclinical animal cadaver uh, labs between 2011 and 2012. Then the first five cases was done under IRB uh, with the two first cases with a, a experienced proctor in, in the site. After that, we have done about 250 cases. Now we're averaging about uh, two to three cases uh, per month. Um, our outcomes, um, very good ones, zero mortality, zero leaks, 1.5 complication rate. They, they were uh, intraoperative like a pneumothorax that was decompressed with a needle, uh, a, 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 a 16 gauge needle. Uh, we had one uh, intraoperative bleeding that patient just got transfused later. Um, we had one late operoscopic from the application due to GERD. That was like several months after. And we had about three redo uh, poems due to recurrent dysphagia. So talk about poems and see how do they compare uh, with Heller. I know it's going to be another lecture on the surgical treatment that's going to be talked about Heller. But let's look about uh, some papers. First, this paper here that we actually comparing, this was back in 2009, comparing endoscopic therapies, not poem, like balloon dilation and, uh, and Botox injection, with uh, other methods for uh, myotomy, including laparoscopic myotomy, uh, which was the, the most used. So what we found first was interesting to see, of course, that um, open versus minimally invasive esophageal myotomies, 
the symptoms improvement very good in both of them. But when you look about uh, the, the, the prevalence of uh, post-treatment uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease, uh, they could see they're quite similar, slightly better on the laparoscopic approaches. But then the most important thing about this paper, the main reason I'm showing this is because when they were talking about GERD after laparoscopic heller with and without fundoplication, the symptoms improvements were similar to both of them. But the patients with fundoplication have much less prevalence of gastroesophageal reflux after um, the procedure. And again, this is only comparing laparoscopic heller with and without fundoplication. There's no comparison of POEM here. So now brings us to this next paper, which was published in 2019, which is a very nice uh, meta-analysis looking about uh, several different papers and able to compare uh, those results between POEM and Heller. So this one here, looking at the Ector score, um, you can notice that the, the post-operative scores were lower, which means better in the POEM group. Uh, than the Heller myotomy group. And this was using a pooled standard, standardized mean difference uh, for the assessment. What about uh, GERD? Similarly here, you can see that the, the reflux symptoms are quite similar uh, on both Heller and POEMS. Uh, although Heller, although POEM has slightly higher a presence of uh, erosive esophagitis on endoscopy, although both pathological and and, uh, acid. Now let's look POEM versus Heller in numbers. So there are two papers that are uh, good to illustrate this. This one is back in 2009 that was comparing just endoscopic therapies, balloon dilation and Botox injection with all the surgical therapies. The key points to take from uh, this paper is that independently what which operation that was done uh, either open or laparoscopic through the chest or through the abdomen, there was a, a post-operative uh, incidence of gastroesophageal reflux ranging between 12 to 28 percent. Also, they've shown that when now only comparing now the Heller uh, myotomy done laparoscopically, that when the fundoplication was performed, there was much less presence of uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease after the procedure, even though there was present between 8 0.8% versus the 31.5%. The second paper actually compares uh, POEM with Heller myotomy, and this was from 2009-19. They reviewed about 15 uh, papers uh, in a meta-analysis. More than 1,200 patients follow up for a very similar period. And what they found was that the, the post-operative active score were lower, which means better, in the POEM group than in the Heller myotomy group. That was by using a pooled standardized uh, mean difference. They also showed that the length of the myotomy was greater in the POEM group than in the Heller group. Interesting also enough to see that when you look to talk about reflux, there was no difference in reflux symptoms and pathological reflux uh, uh, scores on pH monitoring between the, the two groups. This was by using a pooled uh, risk ratio. What they showed was there was uh, erosive esophagitis on endoscopy. Um, the presence was uh, higher in the POEM group than in the Heller group. And, and the, the perhaps uh, justification that uh, after a POEM uh, compared with a uh, laparoscopic, um, you know, Heller myotomy has uh, similar um, or less GERD symptoms in some of the papers. Maybe it's because if you look at the surgery on the right side, for us to achieve that uh, surgical field, we have to be disrupting uh, many anti-reflux mechanisms other than just the uh, LES. We are taking down the fundus, the angle of his, uh, disrupting the, the gastric valve, the clasp fibers, uh, these link fibers, uh, and the friends of a dual ligament. So if you take it all in consideration that the POMI only are disrupting the, the circular fibers, sometimes the, long, the longitudinal fibers of the esophagus, that might be the explanation we have, why we have in those, uh, this type of evidence. So uh, furthermore, I uh, would just like to add the POMI also has some unique advantages. Uh, it is uh, preferable to be, the, to be performing uh, morbidly obese patients of achalasia just because the access is easier. Also in patients who already had bariatric surgery done before because it's much easier to access that field endoscopically uh, than laparoscopically, which is similar for other uh, 
uh, previous four gut operations as well. Uh, can also be performed uh, in cases of prior myotomies or either prior hellers or prior poems. Poems can be performed any size of the wall. Uh, in general, we do at two o'clock, but it can then posteriorly for uh, fail anterior poems, can be done a size of the walls as well. Can be done for other uh, esophageal motilities disorders such as uh, DES, nutcrackers. Uh, poems has been shown also to be uh, superior than Heller for uh, type three achalasia just because you can do a much longer myotomy. That being said, in conclusion, POEM is at least as good as our uh, current gold standard, uh, Heller myotomy, is as durable, as safe, similar GERD uh, you know, scores uh, as laparoscopic Heller myotomy in some papers. Also, it prov uh, provides us the opportunity to explore other intramural applications, not going to be covering on this talk, such as uh, Zenker's diverticulum, or uh, enucleation of GIST tumors in the esophagus and the stomach, among others. And perhaps in the near future, when you have uh, 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 flexible robotic endoscopes, we're going to allow us to do even further, uh, more complex operations. That being said, thank you very much. It has been a pleasure to present this here virtually. Um, th thank you.